guys welcome back to another video with the fam as you can see someone is missing so you know when she's missing she's at school so we're gonna have to go pick her up in just like maybe two hours or so yeah <clears throat> so we are here doing like kind of a a lunch mukbang combo type of situation you know so today we are having some onion rings um every time i put zayla in charge of making food something is a little overdone okay it's crispy now we call it uh that's that's not burnt that's now, crispy. Now, now we call it nearly burnt crispy i have a veggie burger here with some coleslaw i mean yeah that's how that looks so that's a veggie burger with some coleslaw. She got the uh, coleslaw sticking out. <laughs> she got it sticking out. Come on. Come on. Cheers. Uh -huh. Now, before we begin, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you won't miss another video from the fam. Period. Okay? <laughs> so now, hit it. Thank you, Father, for this week. Thank you, God, for everything. Amen. Amen. Now let's dig in. Oh, I'll hold on. All right, y'all. So what y'all up to today? Today is a very, very cold day. Like in the past week, it's been like maybe 65, 70. I think we have one day of 70, but now today is like 35, 40 degrees. So it is freezing outside today. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I had to put on a different jacket today. Unbelievable. Okay. Mmm. 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 -mm -mm. Oh, and I have some some uh sweet jalapeno peppers. Mm-hmm. I'm good. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. This burger, it's a veggie burger, but the flavor is almost like a Burger King Big Mac. Oh gosh, <laughs> a Burger King? What you call it? Whopper. Whopper. What you say? Mhm. 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 Yeah. That's something. Mm. That's good. Mm. Like it doesn't smell like much either. Mm -mm. But it has a lot of flavor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like the Beyond Burgers, they smell uh -huh. like um, dog food. Mm. Maybe it is dog food. We used to always get the Beyond Burgers. But for me, for some reason, they just smell like canned dog food. I don't know. That that smell really turned me off. We used to get them all the time. In the beginning of quarantine. Yeah, in the be beginning of quarantine. Mm hmm. It tastes just like me. Mm hmm. It's crazy. But the smell just wasn't doing it for me. Mm mm. Mm mm. I'm putting my peppers on here. Mm. I love spicy food. Zay doesn't like spicy food. Mm -mm. Lay, she she can tolerate spicy chips. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she likes a spicy chip. But spicy food, she doesn't like spicy food. Mm. Um, mm. Today I decided to do almost like a part two. I don't know. Almost like a part two on the video that we did asking my teenage my teenager random questions. So I do have questions, so they're not gonna be random, right? But here's my little bowl here. This is <laughs> <laughs> this this belongs to the Brent's kitchen, but we're going to use this as our little uh you know question bowl. So I have eight questions in here. Zayla's gonna pick, what, how many? Five. Five, okay. We'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. So she's gonna pick some questions at random. 
okay? So here we go. So I try to make these questions as juicy and as appropriate as possible, okay? Whenever you're ready, my dear. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh-oh, Oh, I think there's two in here. Oh, never mind. So it says, how do you feel about teenage girls not dressing age appropriate? Mm. So, just in case the people in the back didn't hear her because her voice is like, oh, sorry. So the question is, how do you feel about teenage girls not dressing age appropriate? Now, I thought this would be a good question because they've been often showing me pictures um, of someone's Instagram. And then she would ask me, like, for example, you know, she would say to me, well, um, how old does this, does this person look, right? And I would guess very high because the person looks like they're up in age. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the person is like, like just, just probably turn what, 14, no, 15, 16. Mm -hmm. And I will always guess high because of the way they're dressed, right? Not just the makeup, but the boobs out, the booty out. I mean, everything just hanging out. Everything is tight, you know, form fitting. How I feel about it, I'm all about self-expression, you know? Especially somehow you feel. But we have to also be aware of the environment we're living in right now. In an ideal world, you can wear whatever you want to wear and you won't face no problems. But these men these days and these predators, they do a lot. Creep. They will look at a child in a bathing suit on the beach and then get, you know, weirdly aroused by it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's okay, it's okay to dress how you want to, but make sure that you're cautious about it. And like, it's kind of odd because when I was 15, I wasn't like wearing the corsets and the weaves and the, uh, it's like, I didn't have, I, I haven't even reached that phase in my life yet. And I don't think I'm going to really get there. Mm -hmm. But like, it's just kind of interesting to see how people are developing so quickly these days. Um, yeah. Why do you think that is? Maybe social media influence, you know? Mm -hmm. A lot of people, they want to be like Jada Wada, and they want to be like... Uh, Who's that? It's, it's Lil Baby. That's his... Um, I don't know. That's his girlfriend. Baby mother, he keep cheating on. But <laughs> they want to be like her. They want to be like Cash Doll and Asian and Dream Doll, all the doll. They want to be like that. And like have the wealth and status that they place themselves at. So it's like they want to be like them and just like them and have standards just like them. But meanwhile, they're very, very young and they're kind of just rushing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're rushing. Yeah, when I was when I was younger, when I was 15, 16, Excuse me. Um, in the 90s, I was 15, 16, right? Mm -hmm. Girls didn't dress the way that girls dress now. The look back in the 90s, back in the 80s was Big pants. If we had something tight, we had kind of like maybe a bralette on, but the pants were huge. We had on the tennis shoes, you know, the big bamboo earrings. That was the look. You know, everything was kind of, was not even kind of, everything was baggy, right? And it was a look. It was a style. You know, you were having a big shirt and maybe you had a little bra showing, you know, you have your shirt open, but your bra showing. Mm -hmm. And that was considered sexy. That was considered cool, right? But now these girls have that all the breasts out, Okay, all the butt out, everything hanging out. For what? What is it that you want to gain from this outfit? What is that? What is it that you want to gain from this look? Maybe it's just self confidence kind of thing. Cause I don't have enough confidence to wear something like that. But I have confidence to like put on like a like a groovy outfit, you know, like some like uh, wide leg pants and like a nice um, bright shirt and stuff like that, and do my hair. Like, my natural hair, I like to embrace it. Some girls, they can't do that, right? But that's what I like to do, and that's how I feel confident. So maybe it's just a confidence level kind of thing, you know? I think it's more than confidence. I think it's just screaming for attention, okay? Mm -hmm. Screaming for attention. Oh, look at me. Look what I have on. Look at my body. Look at my curves. Look at my this. Look at my that. I disagree. Okay. I have to agree. 
Okay. Like when you're surrounded by all of this fake body, fake this, you know, you the designer stuff, the type this, type that, you're just kind of like adapted to what it is that you see. It's not necessarily I want attention, look at my body. It's more of like, well, I see her doing it and a lot of my friends are doing it. Mm -hmm. So it looks cool and they're all confident. They're all having a good time. It's not like I want him to look at me like, how can I, what can I wait out make me feel the best? But that's a mindset that I feel like you should have when you get older, you know, because like you don't want that kind of attention. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Next question. <laughs> okay. okay. That was a good one. All right. So, uh, I'm going to try to read louder again. Okay. Mm-hmm. What does the word boundaries mean to you as it relates to friendships slash relationship? Mm. There's certain words that kind of like come off harsh to me. Mm -hmm. The word boundaries, it's like a very hard word. Why? Like, it's kind of like, it just is like a really, really harsh word to use boundaries. Like, I would use the word limitations. Limitations. <laughs> potato, potato. Because the word boundaries, it's like, I have boundaries. What other word makes me feel that way? I, I forgot. Mm -hmm. But it, it does. Yeah. So, it just means like, I'm going to do what makes me feel comfortable. However, you cannot make me do something that I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Even if it makes you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know? Because mm -hmm. we're different people. And... If I don't want to do it, please don't pressure me to do it. Mm. Yeah. That's good because a lot of teenagers fall for peer pressure. Mm -hmm. So, Cause, mm -hmm. yeah, because my anxiety, I used to have bad anxiety. It just physically won't let me do it mm. if I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like a shutdown kind of thing. And I don't want to have to shut down any kind of friendship or relationship because, like, now I'm not being myself. Now I'm like in like fight or flight mode. Mm -hmm. And like I'm just trying to get out of that situation. Yeah. So, in a friendship. So maybe you, maybe you don't have to actually express the person that you have boundaries. Mm -hmm. But how would you make it so that they see or understand that you have boundaries? Okay, so like, if they're smoking weed, right, you can always like play it off. So if they're smoking weed, you say, uh-uh, girl, that's something in my head hurt. I don't, I don't like smoking that stuff. Mm. Don't smoke that stuff around. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that's enough to let you know, okay, let's not smoke around Zaylin. That gives her a headache. Or, girl, come take this shot. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm good. Mm -hmm. But y'all have a good time. I am still have a good time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, let's mm -hmm. just say I'm the, um, what's it called? Designated driver. Mm -hmm. You know, and I watch over y'all because somebody got to watch over them when they drop. Exactly. You know, so I think you don't have to, it, has, it doesn't have to be serious. Okay. You know, or like you've been a girl and I see she's flirting with you. I say, you know what? I don't like the way, you know, she's flirting with you. Please, like, um, set some sort of uh, thing with her. I'm confused. Like, okay, your friend, let's say your friend is getting like oddly flirty with like your boyfriend. I like your, your thing or whatever. Okay, so you have a boyfriend. You're somewhere at a party with your boyfriend. And your friend or maybe someone else is, is maybe, uh, you know, getting a little bit too comfortable with your boyfriend. Right. Mm -hmm. You can set a boundary by being like, you know what? Um, you're kind of doing a lot right now. Mm -hmm. So just relax, you know. I don't know if that was hard. Uh, well, 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 <laughs> well, if someone would tell me that, I think that would probably open up a different can of worms. Right, it it seems kind of uh, aggressive, you know. <laughs> ju just relax, just, okay. Just relax. Or else, like, girl, just relax. You don't gotta do all that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Relax. You don't have to do all that. You, you so, know? so what about just kind of like pulling her to the side and just having just a simple conversation? You know, you know, oh, uh, Stacy. Mm. Um, I know you're a cool person or whatever. You know, we have a good relationship and I want it to stay that way. And it's just kind of making me feel uncomfortable the way that you are interacting with Jimmy. 
and so is Jenny. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, like that. It depends on the atmosphere and mood. And also your relationship with Stacey. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's how you will set boundaries. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Very good. Not 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 so much, you know, just kind of like stating it, mm-hmm. but like stating it without actually being verbal with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Without actually saying, this is my boundary, Stacey. Do yeah. not cross them. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Very good. Next. This one says, how do you feel about setting standards? Okay. So this question, I feel like it's kind of piggybacking off of this question um standards for your relationship what kind of guy do you want or like i don't know okay so let's kind of dig deeper into this question so okay. how do you feel about setting standards so um okay so we'll play on the relationship standards um what kind like what will you look for in a guy i like intellectual people mm-hmm. i like people who are smart okay that's very attractive to me who can also teach you something who can also teach but also is willing to learn mm-hmm. and who's not stuck in their ways I, you know i don't like people who are stuck in their ways mm-hmm. i tell you I, okay uh oh, uh oh, oh, she's like, it's about to get juicy up in here. Okay, so I'm telling you something. I don't like when you do this. Mm-hmm. You do it again. I tell you again. You do it again. And then when I tell you again, a little bit more aggressively, it's oh, you're starting arguments. You're being confrontational. Like when I bring something to you, because I'm very, very um, verbal and I'm expressive, and you're not, I'm not doing that to be confrontational. I'm telling you because I just cannot function with it on my mind. So, and so basically you want that person to acknowledge your feelings. To acknowledge my feelings, mm-hmm. you know. Don't mm-hmm. put it on a burn, a back burn because you don't understand it or you don't see the wrong. Of course you're not going to see the wrong. You've been doing this all your life, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you because it's bothering me. Okay, okay. So you want someone who is understanding. Understanding. Uh, mm-hmm. You want someone who's willing to compromise, willing to acknowledge your feelings, yeah. all right? Because, you know, I'm not an emotional person, but I do, I'm very, very opinionated. And mm-hmm. I'm very, very opinionated. And I also want somebody who can, like, kind of go back and forth, but, like, not in an argumentative kind of way. But, like, you tell me how you feel and you stay your point and you don't, like, back down from your point. You know mm-hmm, what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. We could, we're we able to have a discussion back and forth even if we don't agree. It comes to us kind of like um, mm-hmm. common ground. Mm-hmm. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. I got you. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, so, as far as looks, what kind of standards would you set as far as looks? Um, as physical appearances. You know, I don't have much of, like, a preference. You know what I'm saying? Girl, she don't got no preference, honey. Right? So if you walk around here looking like freaking... No, I mean like... If you people, walk around here looking like Bigfoot, she she said, Lois, Bigfoot, as long as you smart, <laughs> we can vibe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, people have, like, weird preferences when they're like, oh, I only date... I only date, like, black boys, or I only date, like... Light skin. I only date light-skinned boys, you know so, I mean, whatever, it teaches on. But me personally, um, looks wise, I like clean nails. Um, clean. If you're going to be growing a beard, let's make sure it's clean, okay? No. <laughs> no. We, we, we don't want no peasy beard. <laughs> we don't want okay, no If you're going to have a beard, make sure you keep it up. We don't want right? no peasy beard. Yes. None of that. Yes. yes. You got what I'm saying? Everything has to be kept. You have to be well groomed. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It, it takes but a few minutes to make sure that everything, you brush your hair, you brush your beard, you clean your nails, you know what I'm saying, brush your teeth, you mm-hmm. know, all the other things that come with, you know, day-to-day hygiene. You know, it could just have, it's just going to be sloppy and, you know. Exactly. You know, oh, my gosh. Anything. I tell her all the time, do not, do not bring a boy home and his pants are hanging off of his... Ba-do, ba-do. Okay. <laughs> do not 
because he will make a U-turn real quick. Okay, I think that is the most disgusting. Uh, listen, <laughs> listen. If that's what you like, like she said, two to each is all, right? Whatever. <laughs> listen, do your thing, right? But for me, okay, I think it's the most. Okay, so maybe I shouldn't say disgusting. Right? <laughs> Just. <laughs> I think that is the most disgusting look, okay? That's just like a girl and she walks out the street and her pants are not the, the right fit for her. And then when she sits down, the pants, you can see have her butt, okay? <laughs> it's not the right fit, okay? Get something that actually fits you, all right? That's all, that's all. If you're a size, if you have like a 30, a 30 waist, okay? Why are you buying pants that's, that's a 42 waist, okay? Just oh and what this too the boys they want to wear the skinny jeans but the, the jeans are still off of their butt how does this work how does this work and then <laughs> how does one walk how does one, <laughs> oh my god don't even talk about the walking okay don't even talk about the walking i've seen some guys that pants hanging up the butt okay the pants are dang near off their thighs and they have to like open up their their legs mm -hmm. in order to walk it is the most it's, it, <laughs> <laughs> it's less than smart okay it's less than smart to dress this way okay if that's what you like that's what you like okay but i'm saying for for me and my girls it's less than smart to be with someone who dress that way that's it okay <clears throat> honest people want to enjoy themselves have a little drink here have a little smoke here please do not be walking around looking smoked out oh my drunk God. out lips black hair nodding the eyes crusty and in red. You get to, you wake up smoke. Go to sleep smoke. After meal smoke. It's like, can you function? Midnight snack smoke. Midnight snack. Uh, what? It's too much. It's too much. That's very unattractive. It is. I'm sorry. It is because with that smoking, like she said, you get the black lips. You get the darker lips. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the, the black. Girl, since I have to watch what I say, I have to watch what I say. I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your lips are, are are darker, right? Then your but yet then your teeth become darker too, right? So instead of having, I mean your teeth. I mean some people have bright white teeth, but I don't even think people have bright white teeth, mm -hmm. right? So some people have nice white teeth, but then once you start to smoke, they become like you know. Uh, off white, then they become beige, and they become <laughs> khaki, <laughs> khaki, <laughs> <laughs> and then just play, just plain old brown, right? It's it's disgusting. It's not a look. Trust me, it is not a look. So you know what? Stop it. Get it together. <laughs> Get it together. Like you know, you smoke too much weed when the smell permeates and oh it seeps into God. the fibers of your clothes and in your hair. Your fingers are black. Like it's just like I was telling Zayn one day. You know, I was in a train going to work, and this it was like nine o'clock in the morning. Okay, this young lady, maybe no older than twenty five years old, she passed by me, and when she passed by me, the whiff. A weed smell that I got from her. I was just like, it's nine o'clock in the freaking morning and you already smoking? Like, what is going on? They put something in that weed and make it addictive. True. Tell me I'm lying. <laughs> I don't know. But next. Right. <laughs> That's a long one. Okay. Why are millennials more prone to mental health disorders? Um, how can this problem be remedied? <clears throat> this is a very, very deep question. Mental health disorders. My mind first went to depression. A lot of people have depression. I think that when everybody is so confined to social media's idea of happiness and social media's idea of what's good, what's a goal, you know, you lose yourself. You get what I mean? You're trying so hard to 
look like Kim K and dress like the baby and all this stuff. Like, you need to be yourself and be a kid. Because you can only be a kid for so long. You know, like, this depression is getting crazy. It is. It really is. It's, it's really a sad, sad time right now that so many young kids are just experiencing this this kind of um of health crisis mental health crisis right and i also think it's the disconnect between the parents generation and the kids like the parents have didn't necessarily grow up with depression being so big mm -hmm. and they just simply don't understand okay why is jimmy walking around sad why is jimmy you know why is his um his his self-care gone down mm -hmm. yeah they don't understand they think it's a phase and it's not a phase it's a, it's a disorder so we need to really sit down and have like open you know dialogue, dialogue. Mm -hmm. and and parents have to be more understanding mm -hmm. you know and more vigilant more vigilant like mm -hmm. don't be don't just be sad when when jimmy you know Mm -hmm. or, or or like. don't dismiss it don't right. dismiss if you see that your children are acting um out of the norm you know, ask the questions. Mm -hmm. You know, don't just say, you know, well, everyone has bad days, so maybe Jimmy is just having a bad day. Right. You know, um, ask the questions. Find out what's going on. You know, find out if they, <clears throat> find out if they actually need. You know, if it's if it's a situation where you can't help or you can't really uh, get to the root of the problem, or maybe Jimmy just don't want to open up to you because you're the parent. Maybe try to seek outside help, you know, um, a therapist, you know, if you go to church, maybe, uh, you know, there, there's, there's some kind of resources within the church that will help with you know, people who are struggling mentally. You know, there are a lot of resources out there, but people mm -hmm. just, I, I guess sometimes it's, it's this thing to mm -hmm. the black and brown community that's seeking help for mental issues. You know, you just don't do that. Right. But you have to. You have to do that. You have to. Yeah. Because you don't want people turning to alternative substances to make them happy or, mm -hmm. you know, make them feel a sense of joy. Some people get depressed, so they turn to, I don't know, nicotine or, like, the, they start abusing substances at a very young age and learn how to bottle stuff up, you know. And, and it only, it takes so long for it to come up. I've never dealt with depression myself, but... I have dealt with anxiety mm -hmm. and um, it's really like a burden. Mm -hmm. It's a huge burden. And I remember one day mom was like, you need to go to therapy. I was like, no, nah, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Cause school was really like, it was really tough. Hard. It was tough. Yeah. Um, not only the substance abuse too. I mean, it could just be, it could just be final. And you know what I mean by that? It could just be final. That's it. That's it. Some people, they can't handle um, just, some people just can't handle just, just life, period. Yep. <clears throat> and mm -hmm. it becomes a burden on them. A real burden. So you, you must, if you are having mental issues, depression, anxiety, anxiety is a real thing. Anxiety is a mother. Okay. I've suffered from anxiety myself. When my mom passed away, it was just like a trigger for me. That's where it all started for me. And I sought out help. I had no idea what was going on with me. What was going on. Until a doctor told me, okay, you need to go see a therapist. There's nothing wrong with you physically, but there may be something wrong with you mentally. And that was that. Mm -hmm. All right. Next question. <laughs> Hope with something a little bit more lighthearted. Uh, but yeah, oh, I didn't. You said like, how? What would you say to fix it? Oh yeah. For me, my anxiety really subsided when I got more spiritual in myself. You know, mm -hmm. I got into crystals. I got into the whole, you know, meditation. The whole meditation. Mm -hmm. The whole thing. Kind of dissociate myself with all this. I cut out all the news, all the bad people. Yeah. You know. And I found peace within myself, and I, I've never been happier. Like, yeah. this quarantine has been great for me, you know? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes, I mean, that's all it takes is just changing your environment. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you just have to clean house, which means the, some of the people around you, you're just going to have to, you know, yep. 
get rid of them. <laughs> and maybe, maybe your diet, too. Your oh, diet. yeah. Yes. I saw somewhere where okay, the, the pigs know when they're in the slaughterhouse mm-hmm. and they know when they're going to die. So they die in a state of <clears throat> anxiety. Mm. So once you consume that meat, that energy is then transferred to yourself. Mm. So you have to be careful of what you're eating on all these animals that like ground beef or that different energy from like 50 different cows. You know what I'm saying? Wow. <laughs> yeah, y'all look that up. Y'all so, look that up. That's interesting. I cut out the meat and everything. My mm-hmm. skin cleared up. I was eating avocados. <laughs> 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 okay, she, she tried to be a vegetarian like me. <laughs> okay. okay, newbie. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a year. It's been a good year. So, okay. So, I'm moving on to the next one. Okay. <laughs> when you got that one okay so how would you tell your friend if he she has bad body odor (laughs) no it says would you tell your friend would you tell your friend if he or she has bad body odor what I I mean eventually yeah eventually like after how much time has passed (laughs) Like, like after you just can't take it anymore. Two, three I, I years. I guess so. I mean, like, but like, what if they they just don't know? Like, what if they don't smell it? Either? Y'all, how could you not know if you have body odor? Some how people don't know? How could you not? How? Maybe your house smell like it, and then you leave that house and you don't smell it. How could you not know that you have that your breath is a bit tart? Okay. <clears throat> how could you not know if? You know, you, you've been sweating. All, it's, it's a hot day. You've been sweating all day. Your underarms are, oh, you know, are doing a lot. Right? How could you not know that? I don't understand. It depends on the time of year. What? <laughs> like, if what? It's, like if it's the winter and it's not like smoldering outside, like there's no excuse to be smelling. Listen, people have bad breath all year round. We're talking about body odor. <laughs> Well, that, that's the part of the body, too, your uh, mouth. Under your arms. I remember this boy in middle school. I thought he was so cute. But, oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know, he just had a little bit of body. And I'm like, can I get past it? I can't, I can't get past it. Yeah. I'm like, sorry. Um, but he was a little aggressive. So I was like, maybe not. <clears throat> I, think, I think the body odor, I think it's the body in its entirety. Okay, just not the underarms, okay? Bad odor just does not come from the underarms, right? It mm-hmm. comes from the mouth, and it comes from the, from the woo-hoo, too, okay? Mm-hmm. It comes from all over the body. Now, okay, here's one. Um, so she used to go away to uh, sleep away camp. Um, month, two months. Mm-hmm. What? I don't know what you're going to say. <laughs> So she would go, okay, so here, here I'm going to set the scene for you. You're away somewhere with your friends. Um, you know, everyone, is, it's like a communal restroom, right? Mm-hmm. Go to the restroom, blah, blah, blah. That's why everyone doing their thing. But you notice this one friend, every time she comes out of the bathroom, there's something in the air. Right. Mm-hmm. So the first time you smell that something in the air, you're like, okay, well maybe you know, you know, ladies, maybe it's that, uh, you know, it's that, it's it's that time, mm-hmm. right? Okay, so you kind of brush it off, but then it's it's like a persistent, a continuous something in the air, right? And you know, this something in the air is coming from this particular person. Okay, you guys are friends. Okay. Would you say something to this person? And then on top of that, you know how girls like chat back and forth. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Stacy, you know, have you smelled Stacy? You know, every time she comes out of the bathroom, ooh. You know, something like that. Now, Stacy's your best friend. Would you have a conversation with Stacy and say, Stacy, look, um, I don't know how to say this to you, but the other girls in the camp have been saying some things and I just want to make you aware of it. Mm-hmm. Something to that effect. 
I was like, well, what's going on? You know? Okay, I'm Stacy. I'm Stacy. Okay, but hey, Stacy. Hey, girl, what's up? You know, like, I'm just curious, like, what's going on? Because every time you go in the bathroom, it's like, like a, a slight smell, you know? What do you mean a smell? Like, it's a little bit rank. What do you mean? Maybe, maybe the bathroom needs to be clean. No, no. The bathroom's clean. No. So what are you trying to say? Well, I'm trying to say is that, like, if you need hygiene products, I can help you out. So what are you trying to say? I stink? Not like you stink, but like... So what are you trying to say? If if you're offering me hygiene products, then I'm taking that ass. You're telling me that I stink. Like the air around you all the time when you get the air. <laughs> Y'all see, y'all see how that could go. <laughs> how do one do that <laughs> without being offensive? And that's know. the question. Would you tell your friend if he or she has body odor, meaning the entire body, from the mouth, the underarms, or the hoo-hoo? I say don't say nothing unless you're going to get something for them, right? So, like, I would tell them, be like, here, I got you this. And Girl, I don't know. I don't know which way is more offensive. <laughs> if you come to me with some, uh, with some kind of uh, spring flower uh, vag soap, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at you with the side eye, like, what? No, like a, a deodorant, you know. <laughs> That's not. I don't know. No. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to bear that burden. <laughs> But this and is I your, wouldn't do it by myself. But this is this is your friend. This is your homie. How long? How long? I mean, y'all been y'all have been friends since junior high school. I mean, y'all are just tight like this. Okay. Um. Like, just imagine one of your close friends now. Okay. What would you say? Okay, forget about the hoo hoo, cause that, that that's very touchy. What about bad breath? I mean, y'all. I mean, I always carry out toys. Give them a minute. Y'all, I don't know. I, I just feel like no matter what you do, it's going to be damned if I do, damned if I don't. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can offer these things to your friend or, you know, an associate or whoever it is. You can offer these things, but still that person may get offended. Don't you think so? Yeah, but... Like, I feel like I would be offended. I would be, I would definitely be in my feelings about that, you know? I know, but you just change it. And yeah, you know, I mean. deal with it again. Yeah, yeah. And then, <laughs> and this just goes back to the other question, um, standards, right? You just have to make sure that you are taking care of yourself, taking care of your, you know, not only the out, the outward part of yourself, but the innards too, Right? All of this stuff. That's why there's so many doctors for this, for that, for this, and that, and third. If you always have bad breath, go to a dentist. It's easy. Right? Go to a dentist. If something's uh, going with the hoo-hoo, right? There's someone for that, too. Maybe if your hoo-hoo stinks, you should stop using those um, soaps. <laughs> she said, if your hoo-hoo stinks. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if there is an unpleasant odor. Stop using the soap. <laughs> Those soaps are not good for you. Mm-hmm. Use some water. <laughs> That's how they did it in the ancient times. You just use some water. Uh-huh. And with the leaf, to take the leaf, uh -huh. some water, and then everything would be okay. But this is the ancient times. They didn't have all that summer's eve, or that pH balance, all that stuff. They didn't have all that. That's not the question, sis. The question is, <laughs> like, what you tell your I friend? So advice. what you going to tell your friend? Go outside. Y'all at camp now. <laughs> Go outside, Stacy, and get one of them leaves, and get some water, <laughs> and, and fix that right now. Okay? Because I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. It's offensive. That's what you're going to say. Well, is Stacy on her period? Get me past that. <laughs> Maybe it's an infection from the camp. From what? I don't know. The lake water? Probably the lake water. <laughs> girl, Stacey, I don't know if we got an infection from that lake water when we went swimming, girl. But yeah. But that's, like, what, that's what you would say. I make up a lie. Like, I heard somewhere at the lake, it would cause, like, imbalance in your pH. 
and I realized that you've been exhibiting symptoms of, of, of unbalanced pH balance. And I would have just said, you know, maybe stop going in that lake water. Girl, it's, it just keeps going worse. It just keeps getting worse and worse. <laughs> Worse, girl. Okay. So maybe when you get home, you know, tell your mom about it and she'll like take you to a doctor and figure out what's wrong. Like make her nervous. Be like maybe you have this. And then after she go to the doctor and fix the real problem. Girl, I think I think if someone if someone was to tell me that, that maybe because I went inside of a lake and that's why I smell I wouldn't even think it was something else. I would think that some kind of parasite or something then floated up in my urethra or something. <laughs> and then and then, you know, like on that book on that show, um, Monsters Inside of Me, I'll be freaking out. Right, maybe you have mad cow disease. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like what? The lake water. water. <laughs> Something's in the lake? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Go to the doctor and then tell me what it is when you figure it out. Yo, listen, just sum it all up. Like I don't understand how can you not smell yourself? Like I like if, if my breath is is a little tart, I can taste it. Mm -hmm. Right? If my underarms are being just a little bit disrespectful, I know that. <laughs> okay, I know that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I know this, man. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do something about that. Okay. If 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 one day, okay. You know, foo-foo is not like, you know, you know, happy, then I would know that too. Yeah. You know, I know what to do. So I just don't understand, how could you not know? And then how could I, or you, mm -hmm. <laughs> or anyone, tell someone, maybe today's a bad day for you. You know, maybe you need to go back home. <laughs> <laughs> to like comment subscribe hit that notification bell oh uh, what so else you won't miss another video. so you won't miss another video all right till next time peace, peace.